Right. So welcome back. Um, so today in this class, we will go through all the research topics okay, um, that you have submitted and also fine tune that. Okay. So I didn't see the, the one page submission uh, except for a few people. Okay. That is, uh, I think Divya has uh, submitted, John Paul, Lubega, Paul, Paul Evoto. Apart from that, I have not uh, received from the others. So maybe you can <clears throat> take the, the day today by end of day. Before end of day, you can submit it. It's the same place, you know, where you see the classwork section and uh, under submissions, the research topics, right? So you could um, go there, upload your Word document, and uh, it will be there, right? So, um, so just wanted to give time till today, this evening. Uh, but apart from that, I just want us to go through the research topics. And um, let me just share the screen. And kind of uh, fine tune that, OK? So even as we talk about it, we can, um, we can just fine tune that. OK. Um, wh what do you see on screen? Are you able to see the? Yes, Pascal. The Google Sheet, yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, good. So, um, yeah. So, thank you. Um, I think there are about twelve, thirteen people who have uh, submitted. Um, and how many do we have in class? Okay, we have about sixteen students. Uh, one is a teaching assistant, so about fifteen out of fifteen, thirteen have submitted. Okay. OK. OK, so um, yeah, so what we need to do is go through this and, um, and see if uh, uh, what we need to do to fine tune the topic. So we'll just finalize it right uh, today. And after this, there won't be any uh, you know, changes to it. OK, so uh, we'll just start with Lyndon. Uh, is Lyndon in class? Um, let me check. Lyndon. Okay, Lyndon is not there. Okay, Jeffina is Jeffina in class? Is she in there but not there? Okay, so Jeffina, so Jeffina's topic is um, gospel to the physically abused. Okay, so research topic. Uh, typically, um, you all, you just mention what you want to do, right? So, so you can say um, measuring the effectiveness of the gospel. Uh, that is shared to the physically abused, or uh, you know something on those lines, right? So, so when I look at the description, the search topic description, so this is what you said. Uh, I like to do this research to explore how the gospel is being reached to the abused, and what are better ways. Which means you're saying, okay, what is an effective way uh, in which it can be preached, and also to help them grow in Christ, right? So basically, it's a uh, outreach to the physically abused. So, so the question would be: You know, will the physical abuse be male, female, children, old, older folks, right? So, so you need to define that. So, if you're saying physically abused, then uh, obviously the question would be: If and if your research is only one part of it, um, then then which means that uh, it's left out the others. Other part, so which means it's it'll be taken as a research not complete, right? But whereas if you if a topic says okay, physically abused between the age of so and so, I mean this and this, and if it's men, women, children, or you know something like that, um, so if you mention that, then we would say okay, this is the research, and your work will also reflect that, and we would say okay. Um, otherwise, if it's this topic, no, uh, it it doesn't say. Um, what the research is about, right? So, um, so, uh, so, can you let me know so I can type it? So, okay, take some time to think about it, um, so we can finalize it, right? Okay, okay. Then, uh, is Divya online? Yes, yes, question. Yeah, Divya. Okay, right, Divya. So, your topic is. Um, like a brief review or brief study of five missionaries 
So you can say uh, five missionaries, okay, and uh, so you can change it. Uh, and you know, maybe if you have a description, those who are among the great cloud of witnesses, in the sense you're saying that uh, they've already already gone on to be with the Lord, right? So, so anything in particular that you want to mention uh, about uh, okay, study of great uh, these five missionaries, and um, what is it that you want to bring out through the research? Yeah, I have uh, like uh, uh, sent a one page summary. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that. I've yeah. gone through that. Yeah. So let me just check that. Yeah. Um, it's basically, um, I have listed out, uh, I think, five or six missionaries in that. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to go through like uh, what led them to, uh, you know, uh, to do that uh, great work that they mm. have been called to do, uh, mm. the obedience to the calling and the impact mm. they had, um, and how did they um, like overcome the risks they faced, and mm. what do the lives of the missionary they teach us. So mm. I'm trying to you know find out uh, what is special about them, right? Uh, like right. What, what made them um, do such great um feeds for god yeah okay okay so you have about six missionaries here uh mm -hmm. amy carmichael george Mueller, samuel morris ida scada corriton boom dwight uh, dl moody right six are there and um, so you're going to uh, track maybe uh, probably something about their uh, beginning where were they born some history where how family history uh formative years what really led them to christ and uh, how they started their ministry, where they did it, um, the scope of their ministry, to whom did they minister, right? Mm -hmm. And also the uh, and also these questions, right? Uh, what were the challenges in which they, the circumstances in which they ministered, etc. Mm -hmm. And also assess did they, uh, you know, fully fulfill the impact, uh, or fully fulfill the call that God had for them, uh, in your understanding. Mm -hmm. What are the learnings? Um, you know, so and also it will be good if um, you know what is the impact in the present day. Yeah, that right? I'm, okay, okay. Yeah, so in the present day, in the modern scenario, what is the impact of their ministry, if at all? Right? Yeah. Uh, has it had any impact in today's church, maybe in the very region that they ministered or elsewhere? Mm -hmm. um, their life and ministry has it impacted in any way? And uh, I think if you mention that. Yeah. Um, it'll it'll be good. Uh, and this, so these are suggestions. Uh, mm -hmm. and I think it'll kind of uh, make it complete, and also you can add to it. So topic you can probably uh, change it. You know accordingly. You can mention. You know uh, instead of saying stories, you can sh say uh, a study of um, six missionaries and uh, their impact. Um, and, and their uh, a study of six missionaries on their life and impact. I'm sorry, um, the ministry and uh, their impact uh, in those days, and also I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just paraphrasing a bit. Uh, in those days, and also in modern times, the impact in modern times, something on those lines, right? Something that conveys that would help. Yeah. So, uh, Pastor, I'm uh, trying to. Um, probably five, uh, maybe um, something that I would be able to do. The six, mm. uh, like I just kept a, like uh, a list uh, because yeah, I just wanted to choose. Uh, mm. Yeah, so yeah, will, five. will five yeah. be fine? Yeah, five be fine. Five will be okay, but uh, you need to take into consideration that it's a like it's a research paper, so yeah. you need to go into depths of details. You know, right. Not that right. that uh, like a normal assignment, uh, which is a go beyond that. You know, mm -hmm. just uh, you have to. So something that makes it uh, qualify as a research paper would be the you know the depth of details. Um, something that will distinguish it from just a superficial study of you know life and life and history of the person. Uh, so, so that aspect, if you bring it in, uh, that will be nice. Um, okay. Um, can you can you elaborate on that, Pastor? Like, uh, yeah. So, so when we say you know when we normally study about the life and history, we would say where they were born, where you know their 
like some of the things that I mentioned, but also go into the depths, certain things that uh, which are normally not, I don't know, easily accessible, but because of your research, if you're able to bring out. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Some, some let's, say, let's say personal descendants. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can trace, say, OK, this, this is a, you know, this is the life, this is the family or descendants of, you know, so and so. Uh, if it applies, you know, maybe some are single, uh, somewhere single, but you know, what what are they doing now? Was their life impacted? Something on those lines, which would give the depth of research, which would qualify as a research paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's why. So so you can avoid the brief study. <laughs> you can say you know it's a study of five missionaries, okay. uh, their life, ministry impact and uh, in uh, and, and impact to the modern church or something on those lines um, yeah okay yeah okay okay oh. like for example you know you, you could you could maybe find ministries that say that um, you know this is how they greatly impacted and their whole you know vision everything is based on you know uh, the impact that this person has had uh, in their lives right in their ministry so maybe they follow the same method and, and things like that mm -hmm. so if you add those um that information that data then it would uh, it would make sense sure sure that's yeah true. yeah thank okay. you so you can go with five that's fine no problem yeah, thank you okay so maybe end of day you can you know uh, change this tweak this topic um, so, so just think about it. Uh, I'm, I'm just addressing the whole class, also. You know, if you put this as a research topic, and if you know your finding is is uh, you know doesn't fully satisfy the topic that you mentioned, okay, uh, then you'll have a problem. Okay, so so you need to make sure that the, your finding or your research conclusion fully satisfies that topic. That is why I'm saying redefine the topic. So that uh, that's why I'm asked, trying to find out what is the work that you're going to be doing so that the topic and the work, you know, it, it coincides. Because if the scope of the topic is too vast and the actual research done is, let's say, you know, five on a scale of one to 10, then the research would be deficient. The topic would be too big. But the actual work done is too small; doesn't match. So that's why I'm just saying be as specific as possible, right? Okay. So we have success. Who's raised their hand? And Jeffina also. Okay. First success. You want to say something? Ask. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Morning, success. I want to say thank you so much. Uh, sir, is it possible for you to post our topics and our email for us? Well, it's there in the. Google Sheet uh, success. Google Sheet. Um, what? Yeah. What okay, I'm sharing sir. right now. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So yeah. everyone's listed their topics here, and yeah. also the um, yeah. So you can just go there. You can see what others have done, um, and uh, yeah. Okay. I will. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jeffina, you yeah, yeah. Uh, so about the topic I, I gave. Mm -hmm. So I want to do, if I want to do it between for the teenagers. Okay. Uh, let's do it for both boys and girls, maybe the teenage section. Mm -hmm. So how do you want me to reiterate the topic? Yeah, so it, it would say that it's for the teenagers. Uh, of course, when you say teenagers, we're saying 13 to 19. Right? Or do you have a different age uh, range in mind? 13 to 19. Okay, so 13 to 19. So you're saying, um, so, um, so it's basically teens ministry, but within the teens ministry, um, how is it preached to those who are abused? So when you say abused, um, you, you want to generally talk about the physically abused, right? So you're thinking of maybe violence, maybe um, 
other things like maybe a sexual violence. Um, okay, so whatever you know fits in that, right? So, so probably you will have to define that. I'm just uh, stating you know the nature of the search. Maybe you'll have to define that, and also um, the thing is to find such people, right, who would fit that, so that you can actually do the study. Okay, to because you will have to have actual data to say that uh, you know if there are people in this age group who are experiencing you know have gone through this experience and to find out how was the, I'm sorry how was the gospel preached to them was it effective etc so that's the thing uh yeah so it's, so it's a um, so when you say this, it's uh, it's a bit of a challenging, uh, yeah, you know, challenging topic. Challenging from the perspective of uh, you know finding out the data, because it's um, you know, people may not be forthcoming in sharing, um, and again, your you know your subset is uh, in the church, right? So we're saying in the church, how's the gospel preached? Um, so, so that's the thing. Another way to find out is maybe not the victims themselves, but to find out from maybe ministry leaders or church leaders to see, you know, do they have such, such a, you know, group of people whom they are ministering to, maybe counselors, um, and to find out you know, how do they receive the gospel? Was it effective? Or, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I just want to be clarified. So, when I say even the physically abused, uh, do you think I have to make it much more detailed? Because this, uh, like violence, sexual murder, everything comes up. Maybe even if I look into it, maybe I can't like do every single abuse into the research. So you think it's better if I like really say what kind of this physical abuses even in the topic is that? Okay. Yeah. So that would uh, narrow down your, you know, this. So you can focus do a focus study. Um, so like that, um, yeah, you can narrow it down, but I, I, I'm just thinking, um, uh, probably you have a method in mind, how to find the information, you know, let's say a sample size of 50 to, to 50 or 60 in order to form a good conclusion, right? Data based informed conclusion based on that because i think less than 50 would be very uh, it may not be accurate right and without data you can't generalize so that's the thing um so you think about it okay and see um, whether you want to do this <laughs> uh, is it possible and you got we've got about you know 2 months so we already started February, so uh, th think about it. Let me know. Yeah, okay. So, um, who else? Uh, Lyndon? Yeah. Yes, Lyndon. Praise Lord. Praise uh, Lord. So, uh, yeah, I, I was really surprised to see uh, this morning that the description was blank, mm -hmm. but yeah, thanks. Our of sisters did respond. Actually, I have lost those. Uh, description. I did not save it on my machine, so I'll have to, you know, redo it. So I won't take mm. your excuse for it. And uh, this morning I submitted the summary, a one-page summary, but it took mm. six minutes past nine o'clock to do it, so it still shows missing on it. Mm. But I would appreciate if you could take time to look into the summary. So um, it's already been my... done, is it? You've already. Uh... Yes, okay, but it says. Nine, okay, six. I'm just clicking on it. It says missing. But yeah. um, okay, uh, I'm just accessing it. Okay. So, so my my intention of this research is to, uh, mm. uh, or, or how I would see this is to uh, 
prepared a, a, a sort of a questionnaire uh, discussed with uh, some of the uh, you know the, the bishops or reverends or pastors or you know believers elderly people from representing a certain denomination from mm -hmm. people who are from a traditional background who have a strong understanding of uh, you know what they represent and how they see revival from their perspective um, and do they support, do they anticipate, do they encourage, or do they have a different opinion on it? And what, from a denom, from their respective denomination standpoint, what differences or hindrances that they see, and eventually uh, you know, uh, combining all, and uh, not, not combining, but uh, addressing all this, or you know, looking at all their. Uh, opinions and differences and see if we could support with some, if I can support with some scriptural evidences and uh, provide my uh, feedback or opinion on what could be done uh, mm. so that yeah, we could. Uh, so is it a study on revival or is it a study on unity? Well, certainly it's around revival and uh, certainly unity is part of it. But it's against uh, the, the, the the stakeholders here will be the denominations, various denominations. Mm. Okay, so so when you say various denominations, uh, Lyndon, again, it will be good if you can um, see. Suppose you you're saying various denominations, and um, in the study, maybe you you've done three or four denominations. That I might ask you, what about this fifth denomination? Okay. You know, I will be so specifying. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, Pastor. So, I'm so, really so it'll be the good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go so it'll be good if you, you know, if you're saying revival, you know, you're you're doing a study on revival, and maybe you have to, you know, kind of talk about what kind of revival have they had in the past in their denomination, if at all, and you know, uh, why is it not happening now, and uh, you know, what is so what you're saying is the in the denomination that there is a, you said denominational divergence, right? So you're talking about some doctrine, doctrinal difference, which is becoming a barrier, right? So I, I'm not able to fully understand that. So is the doctrinal denominational, uh, you know, the doctrine itself, which is a barrier to revival? Or what is it? What is it that you want to actually look at? Well, okay. In, in my summary, I have uh, defined or you know provided even more clarification on divergence. So uh, how I would see it is, yeah, uh, you know, uh, th th there are uh, differences in uh, doctrines among uh, denominations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry which... to uh, sorry to um, yeah, sorry to uh, interrupt. I'm just looking at the. One page um, summary, you know, that you've given. So you've you've defined that what denominational divergence is, meaning examination of differences in belief, practice, doctrines, right, across diverse denominations. And what you want to find out is that um, what is what are these differences of beliefs, practices, doctrines, and how it's impacting the unity. How it's impacting the unity of the Christian community. That's one that you mentioned. And secondly, um, you also mentioned uh, this theological practice and often manifested through distinct. Yeah, okay, you just explained that. So, um, so, so you're saying, okay, these beliefs, practices, customs, how they actually divide the Christian community, and your your research is based on. Revival. Specific to revival. See, the, the, the center point of the nucleus here is a revival. Okay? And there could be several bottlenecks with respect to doctrines, uh, no, with respect to topics, but this is focused on revival. So, and how churches, hmm. how doctrines uh, see revival or approach revival, or do they encourage or support revival? Do they agree on so, you, you can actually focus on. Yeah, so two things that you're going to be looking at. One is unity. Second one is revival. Am I right? 
sorry, sorry, Pastor. You know, uh, no, you're going to be focusing on unity. Sorry, I, did, I missed the entire second. Is it? Okay, so two things that you're going to be focusing on. End of it all. Uh, I won't so two things that you're going to be focusing on is unity and revival. Right? Unity and I missed the second part, sorry. No, unity and revival. It could be a bad signal I've lost it. Yeah, yeah. Oneness. Okay. And no, I'll I'll just yeah, unity is the word that you use and revival. Okay, so yeah, I'll just share that. So so which is which is fine, Lyndon. So I'm I'm just uh, okay. You you go ahead. Okay, um, please be specific about what are those denominations that you're going to be studying because obviously you won't be able to study all the denominations For because sure. yeah. So you can specify maybe five or six denominations. Also, you need to look into what kind of you know work of the Holy Spirit have they had. Uh, how did which means how did the denomination start? Who started it? Uh, what what really prompted the start of that denomination? What kind? What is the history of it? So it's it's quite a you know a lot of research work, uh, but it can be done. And also you know what kind of revival have they had? You know what kind of outpouring have they had? What kind of you know in their ministry? And the challenges you know uh, how did it impact the unity? with the other churches or how did it impact the revival ongoing revival right and you'll come up with your suggestions uh, based on the study of god's word uh, where, where is it that they've you know the customs practices etc beliefs where is it that they went off so that you know and you're going to be sharing from god's word and then some practical standpoints from you know uh, your suggestions and and that's that's a good way to conclude. So, yeah, please go ahead, but change the title because the title you'll have to. It's not, uh, you know, it's not talking about, uh, you know, uh, about the research. Um, you know, the scope of the research. So you would have to change the title accordingly. Right? Is that okay, um, Lyndon? Pastor, I, I, I thought, and I still. Think this title supports my research. So, uh, is it okay for you to you know, give me one month? So, with whatever preparation materials that I can support, and if you still think this title does not support my content, then I yeah, think it is, would that be okay. With yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't support Linden because you're saying denominational divergence, but uh, it, it, which means it includes all the denominations. And you're not going to be studying uh, all the denominations, so it doesn't support the doesn't stop, support the research. If you say some denominations, if you say a few denominations or five denominations, five major denominations, then it, the the research work would support it. But if you're saying denominational divergence, sense. yeah. So that's why I'm just saying, you know, change the title. So that it supports what exactly that you're doing. You think about it, uh, and then maybe you, you know, by evening, if you can change it, that'll be great. Yeah, but it's an exciting topic. Exciting topic. Uh, a lot of you know work that you can do, and I'm sure the findings will be very, you know, exciting as well. So yeah, please go ahead, but just change the scope of research based on. I mean, and uh, let it reflect in the title, right? Thank you very much. I'm excited likewise. Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. So, who Hello, else? Sir. Yes. Is it um, who's that? Success. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are we to choose our topic by ourselves, or you are giving us a topic? Um, no. If you can just, uh, I don't know if you were part of the first class. You can watch the video of the first class again, just to get a hang of. You know what is it that we discussed? So the topic has to come from you. All right. So, so you, thank you. Yeah. I'll, so, I'll, I'll, uh, but I would, uh, I yeah, I would suggest that you please go through the video of the first class that we had, just to go over the specifics. You know why we are doing what we are doing, 
uh, just to get a good understanding of it and then you know proceed further right all right thank you so much i'll post my yeah thank you success okay uh who else so zelitoli yeah zelitoli so cross cultural evangelism an examination of naga missionaries strategies and impact in cambodia so that's very specific and uh, so i i didn't know that there were naga missionaries in cambodia uh you know so i mean it's a looks like a good topic um yeah please go ahead you want to focus on five naga missionaries uh so is it um, like something modern something uh, contemporary that's happening right now zelitoli yes. zelitoli there uh, yes yes okay 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 so it's something happening right now contemporary yes, yes. missions modern missions Okay, yeah. and uh, life of these five Naga missionaries. Okay, um, so what you're going to talk about is the uh, the Naga missionaries, their strategies, and uh, the kind of impact that they've had in Cambodia. Okay, okay, yeah, go ahead. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, then uh, we have. Um, any any questions, Zalitoli? Anything that you have? Man. No, sir. No. Okay. Okay. Um, then. Okay, Rosalind. Rosalind, Christian parenting. So you'll have to change it, to Rosalind. Christian parenting is a good topic, but what about Christian parenting? So in your description, you said, I'd like to do some research on Christian parenting challenges challenges faced by them in raising godly children. So again, like what we discussed last class, um, when you say Christian parenting, uh, are you talking about small children? Are you talking about teens? Or are you talking about all of that, right? Um, and uh, so your topic also uh, would need to uh, so it, it can't be just Christian parenting. So you'll have to kind of add to it what about Christian parenting. Uh, maybe what you've written a little bit in the description, you would you know change the topic accordingly. Um, oh. Pastor, can I say something? Yeah, sure, please. Yeah, yes. thank you, Pastor. So, so Pastor, this is like... Um, Challenges faced by a Christian parents raising godly children, like mm. which will include, uh, like you know, uh, like many parents, like uh, uh, when the child is born or you know their journey in raising them uh, mm. in the word of God, they'll take them to church and you know everything what they can give from their side mm. uh, is is right. It's okay. it's correct, but then. Uh, there comes a stage, age where some children they just go out of track. They become rebellious. Mm. They they are so influenced by the outside world. So I want to do some research, like you know, even though the parents have raised them mm. in the church or in the word of God, yet. Mm there are families like even i have come across mm -hmm. who are facing challenges like the parents have a question what wrong did we do mm -hmm. like, we did everything what what as a christian parents one should do mm -hmm. but still uh, you know the child has become rebellious or mm -hmm. uh, the child is now like say um maybe 2021 or uh, uh, has a job i'm just giving uh you know whatever yeah. i have seen so, scenario yeah okay yeah so the child is like now is self-dependent mm. so uh and doesn't want to support the parent now mm -hmm. uh, you know so uh, uh left the house you know I know about the like, two mm. families. Mm. Once 
uh, in one case the parent is a pastor the another case mm. the parent is uh, just a normal church going parents mm. and, mm. and also uh, uh, so like uh, i want like, I, I know i cannot uh, do some depth research about it but then i just mm. want to go through like like what went wrong or you know mm. Uh, like for the child to become rebellious, like the prayers mm. are there. Mm. So, uh, they're raised in a church environment. Mm. Uh, so what do we call like normally when right. if we are a prayer warrior, we would say it's the attack from the devil. Mm. Uh, like we we fight on our knees, you know, to bring the child back. Mm. Mm. Uh, so. So yeah. So uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. 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 So so the, yeah. so the thing is, um, see, one a question I would ask you is: so how many Christian parents are you going to study, interview, um, in this research? I know two of them. Yeah, so, two of them would be two would be very few, very, very, very less, less to base your whole yeah. research on. It's a very, a very narrow, you know, thing to base your conclusion on. So, because you're saying Christian parents, again, now Christian parents maybe they belong to a certain, certain state, culture, language, um, you know, maybe they are whatever profession, you know. They so, so what is it that you're looking at, right? So. Because the factors would differ, right? And which country, again, right? Is it going to be India? Is it going to be South India, North India? Where? So you would need to, uh, because if you say Christian parents, we are saying globally. So that's the assumption, right? When you say Christian parents, challenges faced by them, we're saying globally. But when you do the research, you realize that, OK, you're doing something local, something even you know, maybe it's in your town, maybe it's in your church. So that is what I'm saying. You know, the scope of research, because if you're if you're saying, you know, Christian parenting challenges faced by them, and you focus on only two couples, two families, then the research is not complete. Whereas if you say a study of maybe twenty Christian couples in, you know, wherever you're from. And uh, or you know, twenty is also a less number, you know, small number. It has to be, I, I would say, at least fifty to find, you know, for a research of this nature, and to study to find out what are the commonalities, what are the things that are different, um, so that that would give uh, a better conclusion, an accurate, you know, finding. So that is what I am talking about, Rosalind. Yeah. So this is this topic is good. You want to find out how they brought the child, and uh, you know, so you're looking looking at the negative side of it, right? You brought they brought the child up in the Christian ways in the best way possible, but something is not right. You know, the child is not maybe coming to church, or you know, they. So we have to find fifty such. Uh, at least I, I'm just saying, you know, fifty in order to find out, in order to come to a good conclusion. So you're topic has to be changed to that you know a study of 50 christian couples uh, on on the on their parenting styles um, and the effectiveness of their parenting style you you get what i'm saying yeah 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 pastor yeah so that's the yeah, so that's I the chat <laughs> hmm. so you'll have to that's why i'm saying you change I'm the topic to reflect what kind of research can you do this will be my first research so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i think for most of us it is yeah yeah so uh, so you change based on what kind of work research can you do right so uh, so this the subject is good parenting is good and uh, yeah um so you think about it uh, rosalind Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, just but by evening, if you can, you know, post 
uh, yeah, and and, and the, yeah, the topic also specifically. Okay, this is what you can do, and it has to have have some depth, um, which is what it is. But if you can, you know, if there are fifty families, uh, maybe in church, uh, where, where do you live, Rosalind? Mumbai, Mumbai. You're in Mumbai, okay. So maybe in church, maybe in another church, and we can give you a letter saying that you're a student, and uh, you know, to whomever you want to give it to, you know, kindly assist in. Uh, collection of research data. You now we can, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just talking to everyone. So I can visit my own church. Uh, yeah. Parents. That's. Yeah, yeah, but and get, ask the, them few get the get the Sure. Oh, okay. But get the permission of the pastor, and you tell tell the pastor that you're doing a research of this nature. Is it okay? Get the permission, and um, and then you can do it. And if you want a letter from from the Bible College saying, you know that. You're doing. You're a final year student, and as part of the uh, requirement for the course, that there is a research that is required, and uh, and so forth. Therefore, if possible, and if they are willing to, they can assist. Uh, and so then you can, yeah, then you can meet and talk. I'm sure you know 50 families, finding 50 families, may not be a problem. So then your research would be, you know, in this particular community, in this church. Uh, yeah, then it would be accurate, right? Okay, so, so Pastor, can I can I like take twenty five um, uh, parents who are who are facing challenges and are struggling, and twenty five can I include some successful stories? Like yeah, that would be group? yeah, that would be good. That will be great. So it'll okay. give a you know you can give the problem the and then give oh, this is what they did, and you can give your own uh, you know from the study of God's word and. Observation and experience, your uh, suggestions, your recommendations, right? That would be good. Yeah, sure. Okay. So based on that, you please change the topic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Rosalind. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Uh, who else is there next? Um, okay. Is um, Paul? Paul ever to is Paul there in class? Okay, Paul. You're yes, I'm there. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. Hi, Paul. So, Paul, um, you're talking about the Great Commission and uh, believers' participation. Okay, so a case study in somebody put their hands up. Um, okay, uh, Divya, I'll just come back to this. Um, whatever you, you put on the chat. So, you uh, Great Commission believers' participation case study in Moroto municipality. Which is, uh, I assume, is part of Uganda and what you, what you mentioned here. So your study is why is there hesitation by believers in witnessing and discipling and carrying out the Great Commission? Okay, so yeah. So when you say this municipality, Moroto municipality, um, you're uh, are you you're talking about how, how many churches are there, uh, Paul? Uh, there are about ten churches. Ten churches. Okay, so which means that you will study, you will do a study on all the ten churches, the believers from all ten churches. Yes. You would, yeah. Okay, okay. So you can, you know, have a sample size from all the ten churches. And are are, are these all ten churches? Are they different, uh, like denominations and backgrounds? Yes, there are different de denomination and different backgrounds. Mm, mm. Okay, but they are all. Um, are they all like Bible believing kind of churches, or you know? Yes, they are all Bible believing. Okay, okay. So fine. So there's some kind of a uh, you know um, commonality there. So you can do that. Uh, a case study of believers and. Um, and to find out why is there so so why do you assume that there is limited um, you know they're not really witnessing uh, what i see with the, uh, what i see in most churches here believers their main work is they go to for church service they offer tithe and offering and then that's all they go home so the rest of the witnessing is left to the reverence to the pastors 
mm. uh, those, those church leaders, but the, the, the real people of the congregation, it seems that is not their business. Theirs is to come and attend a service either on Sunday or Saturday, and then they go home again, they come back next week. So that is what I see them doing. So the rest is left to the, either the pastor or the reverend or the catechist. It is mm. none of their business. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. So um, the title, you can actually, uh, it's, a, it's a great topic. You're trying to find out why uh, the believers are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. The disciples are not doing what they're supposed to be, you know, carrying out their responsibility in the Great Commission. So you please change the title accordingly, right? Um, because when you say uh, Great Commission and believers' participation, I'm not sure if it fully explains that. Um, so maybe you could, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm not able to think of anything, but maybe you could think of something which explains your research a little more, and you can do this. But but uh, you know, please include all the churches. Then you would be able to see why some churches are doing more, you know, uh, and why other churches are not doing it. Um, and also, maybe if you get a, you know, if it is possible for you to. Um, you know, meet with the leaders, the pastors, and so on, and to find out, you know, what they are doing to help encourage the church, uh, the believers in the church. Uh, are they encouraging at all? Right. Uh, that will also give you a clear picture uh, to find out what whatever the reasons are. Right. Okay. So I guess so. How will you? So what method will you use to find out this information? I will use questionnaires and then also focus group discussions. Okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So that would be good questionnaires if people can. So, um, so yeah. So I think you can start by putting together the kind of questions that you want, and uh, you know, uh, you can avoid open-ended questions. Uh, maybe keep it minimal. Right, make it close-ended so that um, you would get all those options and everything in. Um, yeah, and then maybe okay, focus group interviews. Uh, maybe you can have a different set of questionnaires for the church-going believers, and a different set of, I mean, a different questionnaire for those who are uh, the pastors. There, right? you can have two set, two questionnaires, and that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Uh, okay. We we have come to the end of the class, and we still have a few more names to go. Right. Um, who else? Okay. Um, Subhashish. Yes, Pastor. Good morning. Yeah. So, uh, Subhashish, uh, can you just explain? You said justice. Uh, actually, I want to study uh, and research uh, four to five persons, those who have already uh, did a good job in this particular area. So for you from uh, East India side, uh, the one or two persons I have already uh, recognized them, and uh, one or two persons from South India side, actually. No, uh, I, I didn't understand. What is the What is the research about? Uh, research actually is all about justice. What made them to actually, as I've already mentioned that. Uh, yeah, sorry, so when say, yeah, yeah. yeah, when you say justice, um, like what kind of injustice are we talking about? Um, sorry, I'm not able to hear uh, Subhashish. I think your mic is muted. Uh, I think Pastor, I'm outside the it's very noisy. Um, mm, mm. Uh, actually, um, mainly means uh, 
I will focus the people those who are poor and marginalized, and uh, mm-hmm. so actually I will focus the leaders, the those who have uh, given their life to help these people. What made them actually give their whole life uh, uh, to help these people to come out from this uh, um, life? Mm. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I think we need to uh, close now, but I, I'm still not very clear, Subhashish. Um, so you will have to, you know, explain it a little better. So Subhashish, Rebika. Uh, Anita, Leah Lama, Abu Bakr, John, and so what we'll do is, uh, you know, can you? I'll just post my email ID here. Could you please, uh, so we can discuss it further. I'll, I'll either email you uh, my thoughts, and you can reply, and then we'll, we'll finalize it. Uh, you know, uh, that way, right? Okay. So my email ID. Is oh man, did I put okay? I think you can send it to this email ID. Uh, what I posted on the chat, jaykumar.isaya at abcw.org. So, Divya, yes, please uh, study of machine the ministry and impact in the present day thing. Okay, um, yes, you can send it. I think uh, the one page thing you can actually post it, but you can send it also um, uh, to this email ID, Rosalind. That's fine. Yeah, so Divya, you can go ahead with that, please. Um, um, and uh, yeah, so is everyone clear? So we'll we'll do it that way. I'm sorry we couldn't finish it. Um, but let's um, yes, success. Yeah, uh, sir, I have my uh, my research topic. Should I also forward it to your email? Um, you, no, no, research topic. Please put it on the Google Sheet. And okay. uh, if I so I will. Um, I okay, will let email me you. Yeah, right, let me I will. E- sure, okay. sure. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. So research topic. Let's put it on the. So this, I, of course, I'm talking about uh, online students and in-person students. Um, e-learning. Please put it on your discussion page, discussion discussion section, and I will get back to you on that. Okay. So we'll wind up here. Thank you so much. Uh, interesting discussion. God bless you guys. Bye bye.